Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In this episode of Vertical Gardening, we're going to talk about staking up your plants, specifically the tomato plants, and how do I feed the pockets, each level, and how do I feed from the top of the towers. These are uh, green stalk garden towers. I'm affiliated with them. If you want to check out more information about them, please check out the video description, and there is a code that you can get a discount on their products. These are wonderful. I've been growing in these for, I think, at least five years, give or take a year. Wonderful, wonderful products. They work. UV protection, deep pockets, holds lots of soil, and you're going to be able to see what we can grow. But right now we've been growing in this tower indeterminate tomatoes. So it's natural for them to start yellowing off, dying back a little bit. But they're getting heavy. So we're going to want to prop these up, and I'm going to show you the easiest way to do that. You don't need to worry about the yellowing. Now this could be that these plants are now uh, eight weeks. We planted these on April 7th. We set up the soil. I will put that video in the description. But they're probably running out of feed. When you're feeding, uh, when you're growing plants in containers, you have to really keep up on the watering and the fertilizing because they just use it up so quickly. So this yellowing might be that they're running out of nitrogen and fertilizer. I'm going to show you how to take care of that. But essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to just drop in some bamboo stakes, you can use tree sticks, whatever you want to use, and lift up the tomato plants. And what I did is I just picked up a bunch of these bamboo poles um, in three foot sections, and, or three foot pieces, and I'm going to use those to prop up the tomato plant. Nothing fancy. Could it feed in each pocket in a container? Fish emulsion. I just like pouring it right into there. You can certainly go from the top. What I like to use that for is um, my worm casting tea, and I'll show you how to use that. Peppers are going crazy. Great time to feed them. And it's about six to eight weeks after you set these up and they've been growing, you can give them their first water-soluble feeding. If you need to, you can feed them earlier if you want, but you don't have to go crazy with it. Lots of sweet peppers. I've been eating these. Open, one thing I did add these are the um, long skinny eggplant, they're the Ichiban, I believe. And there's tiny holes in here. That is from, usually from flea beetles. And I use insect dust on there. That might have been a leaf hopper to control that. So you're going to have to have an insect dust available. You may need that. We'll talk more about that in a future video. Everything's growing really well. Strawberries are towering down or growing down. They're sending out runners. I will propagate them through there. And a tomato started growing in here. So I'm going to keep that going. And as it gets bigger, I'm going to also tuck that into the tower. We'll see how it goes. And then all my herbs are over there in that tower. All right, let's get set up for fixing the tomato plants. So I, I will put the other videos in the description. But if you've been following the series, we put the smaller determinate types, the ones that might only get 12 or 18 inches up top, we don't want the heavier tomatoes, the bigger tomatoes up top, because it'll topple over the tower. But this is just die off from, you know, maybe it got too hot, they didn't have enough water, I missed the frequency of the water, or let's get that. Missed watering it on time, so they dried out a little bit. When it's a nutritional issue, or the plant's trying to survive, usually the bottom leaves turn yellow. They take everything from the bottom and they send it up here. So there's nothing to worry about. So I'm just gonna, cut out some of the yellow leaves. That's how I'll take care of the plants up here. Now, I'm gonna use fish emulsion in the pockets. You can use any water-soluble fertilizer you want. It really doesn't matter. The frequency, once they're about this big and going, is every seven to 10 days, something like that. Just to, and that's gonna vary. If you're using a highly concentrated water-soluble, where maybe the nitrogen is like a 24, you're not gonna need to do it as often if you're using fish emulsion, which is about a five nitrogen. So frequency will vary. And that's all I'm gonna to do to really clean up these tomato plants. Now, as we go down further, we get to the larger ones. Okay, so this is a bigger determinate variety tomato. You can see how long it is and it's bending down. You could let it run down if you want. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. This way more sunshine gets in throughout here. Three foot pieces of bamboo, you could use two foot pieces, you could use tree branches. There was some yellowing on the leaves here, I cut them off. 
Now you just lift up the plant, drop in the post, and you know maybe I want to sandwich one post on this side, one post on that side, and then I'll just take a piece of string and tie it to the two posts. I like the green stock garden vertical towers because they're nice and deep and you can put your sticks in pretty far so that they stay in. And you may need to use two or three and you can see that's holding. Now I'm going to take another piece of string, use a little more this time, and go all the way to the top here and tie it off around both posts. And I will do a close-up of this so you can see it more. And there's no set way to do this. And that's going to hold it really well. If it was a little bit flimsy, put in the third post. But that will keep this determinate tomato upright and it should do fine until it produces tomatoes and then dies back. Alright, let's go down a little bit further on the tower. Remember, as the plants get bigger, we put them down there. And we'll do one more and I'll show you the tower when everything is done. We're taking a look at this better bush. It's really big. And I get in, look for the yellowing leaves. And again, that could be because I just missed watering on time. But overall, it looks pretty good. You don't want to prune your determinate type tomatoes except for trying to get airflow in there. Let me just cut that whole thing off. And the tomatoes are nice and big. So I'm just going to lift it up again. It's going to be hard to see, but I'm going to drop one post in right here. The other one next to it. And then again, get in here, tie it off. It needs it. Use that third stick if you need it. But that looks pretty good. Now it's upright. That's exactly what you want. Alright, the tomatoes are pretty much staked up and just getting in there, you can see how I did that one. It's the two stakes, the vine right in between and just tied it off up and down. Same thing as we came over to this one. Two stakes, the vines right in between and you just tie it as you need to. These are all the leaves that I took off of these plants. So what you're doing is you're pruning out the bottom, try to keep some airflow going. Just use a single bamboo pole right there and tied it. Nice loose circle there. Don't, you know, tie this really tight, the vine really tight to the stake. You want to leave enough room that it can move around and it'll be okay. And then coming over here, these are some beans which are getting a lot of shade. However, I've got beans on the other side. These are bush beans. I just put these in the shape of an X right here. That will keep them up close and that will just keep them from falling over now, too. Now over here, let's see if I can, can get in there. This is a little Napoli, N-A-P-O-L-I. And look at the beautiful Roma type tomatoes in there. And that's a little tomato plant. It's hanging down. It's a very solid vine, so I'm not going to stake that up, but maybe I will do a whole tower of these next time. So take notes on the tomatoes that do well in the tower. You know, they ripened before everyone. They're a good size. They're hanging in the, pop yeah, in the pockets perfectly. So I think maybe I will do more of those next time. So let's head over here to the peppers, and I'll show you how I prune these. And we'll put in a single stake. We want to support these because they get really, really tall and if you pull on them, they're going to snap. And what I normally do for these is I take out a lot of the leaves from under here. Just clear out this space so that we can water, put our fertilizer in there. So we're going to put fertilizer straight into here, worm castings into the top, and we'll finish up. Let me set up something here so I can show you how I do the peppers. I'm just going to do this side for the video, but I took the leaves all the way off up to here. Give them a lot of space. 
you know, that's the gap that I'm taking off. I just want to show you that. Remove the leaves. And it's just something like that. Nothing fancy. Nice gap. Same thing over there. Take off a couple more. And that's all the pruning I'll do for there. Now here's some of the same green beans from the tomatoes and they're getting more light so they're bigger and that's why you would put that X right there to hold them up just to keep them supported because they can, they're pretty fragile too and they could break right there. Again, this is just the basic setup, the Mad Hatter variety. There's just a lot of pepper here. So I used two, one, two, and I tied off different parts to the stake. You know, two stems in there is perfectly fine. Just used one in there. Did the X down here for the green beans. And, you know, just worked my way up putting in two in some places and just tying them off. And I'll do that for all the peppers. I got here on time for the peppers. I was a little late on the tomato plants. But you want to, you know, set up your stakes sooner than later. This way you don't lose any of your plants. All right, let's get to feeding. The water-soluble feedings aren't an exact science because you're going to be growing different things in your towers. So once the, once the soil, the container mix is set up, six or eight weeks later, you want to start with your water soluble fertilizers. That's up really up to you. How frequently you want to do it? You could go as much as once a week, um, every 10 days, every 14 days. It, it really varies. I like to go about every 10 to 14 days. I use a fish emulsion. That's a 511 NP and K. That's great for the green growth. I'll show you how I do that. I also add in organic um, worm casting tea. This is from Firmus Terra. I'm affiliated with them. I highly recommend their products if it's castings you're putting into your container mix or the worm casting tea. Worm castings don't add a whole lot in the way of nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium. That's a 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.4. But they add in growth hormones, other great things that come out of the earthworm that really help your plants and help the soil, especially in container mixes. There's not a lot going on. So adding in the worm casting tea and the worm casting, I think, m makes a difference. Now, if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend the extra money, you don't have to. Granular fertilizer, compost, fish emulsion works really well. So mix it however your instructions tell you to do. That's a two gallon container that has the fish emulsion. The tip that I think is really important is don't feed your plants after you've watered in your towers. You know, maybe two days later when the towers, the uh, soil's kind of dry, that's when you want to feed them. I like coming in right on the side, about that much per pocket. You could do every other pocket because this is going to move and just kind of fill in that whole lower container. So when it's dry, I feel like the fish emulsion and the fertilizers get absorbed into your peat moss, your cocoa core, whatever you're using, and it's better, and it just doesn't rinse through to the bottom of the container and out. So I would go around, you know, maybe just water this guy real quick like that, but really every other, and I want to show you about how much I put in. You can hear it. Just fill the pocket and work your way around. One gallon probably treats one level, so one and a half, so it'll take me four gallons to really feed this with fish emulsion. That's why I don't feel like you have to do it every seven days or even every 10 days. You know, every two weeks, feed it well, you're good to go. So I would do that for the entire tower. Let me do that and then we'll get to the worm casting tea. Now the amount doesn't matter that much, but I'm just gonna show you because people do ask a lot of questions. A good soaking right in there. And again, I would just do every other pocket up here. You know, no rocket science, but you're just distributing one gallon of the fish emulsion or water soluble um, fertilizer to each level of the tower. One thing you'll run into is if you're doing like the tomatoes and the peppers and you have all your steaks in there, it's going to be hard to put the watering can in here. The vertical garden is a great design. You can feed it right from the top. I just like doing it from the sides because it's a little quicker for me. But the worm castings I put in top. So I just pour in a gallon right into here. 
and that's about a gallon. And the system's set up so that it will just kind of work its way down, and there's trays in each level of, there's a tray in each of the container levels, so that fills up with the worm casting or the water soluble fertilizer, and it gets distributed by drip into the container. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. You're really putting effort into getting the water soluble fertilizer in the top and all the way down to the bottom of the container so that your plant roots can get it from all different places and spaces. Hope that makes sense. You don't need to overstress about the exact technique for this. These are the principles and they work really well. As long as that you're feeding from the side or you're feeding from the top, that works really well. After you're done with your feeding, give them a couple hours to kind of just let that stuff absorb through the container mix soil and then water them in well and then you just go back to your watering routine. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and if you have a small space I highly recommend these vertical towers. We've really fit a lot into this small footprint and things are growing really really well. Thanks for watching and again please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.